I use a couple of weather apps for deciding whether I'm going to take my drone up or out or not. Um, Met Weather, as an initial point of view, it gives me a good overview of the local weather and sun, rain, wind, and things like that. I also use the UAV forecast app. I'll put some screenshots up to both those and also link to, to both apps. In the, the UAV forecaster one's really useful because it gives a general overview of whether it is drone ready outside or not, not just the weather. But once you're out there, how strong do you know the wind is? Are you starting off in a particular wind area? Is the wind tunneled? Or actually, are you in a shelter area and the wind isn't as strong as you think? So this is what I have got here, a digital anemometer. Does wind and temperature. This is the Amgaze one, bought it off of Amazon. Put a quick screenshot up to the page so you can have a look at that and the link will be in the descriptions around it all. Basic directions on the back. What we'll do is we'll pop it open and have a look what we get inside. Sort of plastic sealed packaging. Not too bad to open up. I will take the card out as well, just so we've got that to one side. Set of instructions, the anemometer itself and a CR2032 battery. And that battery did come in a little plastic bag, but I've taken that out again, just for these type of product demonstrations. It's a lot easier not to have too much packaging around. Um, it's just a struggle opening it on camera sometimes. The manual itself has some decent instructions inside of it. The buttons on the on the device are multifunctional, so depending on whether you're pressing a short press, long press, pressing both together or in sequence, it will do different things. Um, put those and it. And what we need to do is put the battery in. So the device is inside a protective case and lanyard attached as well. There, if we turn that over, you can see the battery access there. Quick screw I do always think about it. it's a shame that the so these are like coin coin side slots. It is a shame that the dot battery side you can you can't use the battery to open it. Um, I've got a small screwdriver there. Let's put that open. Pop the battery in. Make sure it's seated properly. And then back on, tighten it up and back in its case. There we go. So to turn the device on, we are pressing and holding the mode button. And it comes on in there. And what you can then see is the wind speed and the current temperature. The wind speed is in meters per second. Again, that you know, there's no harm in that, and you can get used to that. But in the UK, most of us are more used to miles per hour, and that's what most of the weather apps are putting the weather in. So what we want to do is put it into um, the different uh, into miles per hour. So we press and hold the mode button. Flashes set button so that's kilometers per hour feet per minute knots and finally miles per hour and we'll press mode mode again and that puts it back into miles per hour you can change the temperature to fahrenheit if you want to that's on the back you will have to take the case off and there's a little button in the back down there that changes it to Fahrenheit. Um, despite the fact I spend my life in miles per hour, my temperature is metric, so I'm happy in Celsius. And um, so I'm gonna leave that in Celsius for me. And then to turn it off, press mode and set button together. And it goes off. What we're actually keen to do is, I've done that, I've set that. So if I press mode again now, Okay, so it does come back on miles per hour. 
So unless you have a flat battery, it'll come back on miles per hour. What I'll do is I'll just show you quickly. Um, if I move it up a little bit, stand up here, you'll see the number change and slow down again. I will take it outside and show you a demonstration of using it. The one thing to remember, of course, with drones is the wind speed at where you are when you take off is not comparable to the wind speed as you go higher, but it's a good baseline. Normally the wind speed is going to go up as you go higher. So if you're on the ground and you're looking at a 25 mile an hour ground wind, as you go up, that's just going to get um, faster and faster. And that's telling you that perhaps you probably need to consider whether you should be taking your drone out or not. But it does give you those local conditions. And especially if you're in a valley or a sheltered area, it's useful to know that the app's telling you perhaps you shouldn't be flying because it's you know, spin speeds of 21, 22 miles per hour. But where you are, it's maybe 15, 16 miles per hour. And you know you're not going to be flying um, too high or above the edge of the valley or the sheltered area. So therefore, you're okay to fly like that. So that's the Amgaze anonometer. Hopefully, I'll get some use of it and give you a demonstration. We're outside now. We're going to do a field test of the Amgaze anonometer. As you can see, I'm in a fairly shielded area at the moment. Banks either side. But I'm going to go up outside the banks. I want to get a baseline. Met weather is showing speeds about 21 miles an hour with gusts up to early 30s. UAV forecast showing the same thing. 21 miles an hour, basic wind, gusts up to between 32 and 37. Down here at the moment, round about 0 0.1, 0 0.2. Very little movement though. So if you were looking at flying a drone and you came to this area and said where we are now, maybe it's not good clearance for actually launching, but um, you'd think actually it's fairly nice and safe. If you looked up into the trees, you'd start seeing the trees moving. But even that doesn't look too bad at the moment. Let's go on to a little bit of high ground and see what we look like there. We're still on the railway track. Um, the banks have come in a little bit less sheltered and you can definitely feel the wind now. So if I hold this up, roughly in the direction of the wind, I'm getting almost 12 miles an hour on some of the gusts. So if we have a look there, so up to 10, around about eight there. We've gone maybe 500 metres down the embankment but because the sides are less steep and have less covering we're beginning to feel the wind a little bit more. But that's still not what the forecast is. Taking the drone up around about 12 miles an hour is not too bad at all. But that's not what it feels like up there with the looks of what I can see on the trees. So we'll carry on going. We're in one of my usual drone launch locations now. It's a little bit sheltered, so there are trees behind me. But over this way, it is open fields. And one thing a nanometer is quite useful for, is save you having to throw a bit of grass up or have a look, you know, finger in there what direction is. If you just hold it up, whichever one you're getting the strongest wind speed from is the direction. So holding it that way, which isn't the direction of the wind, I'm getting speeds of around about five, six miles an hour. And if I go that way, that's 13, 15 miles per hour coming out of that gust wise. And the base speed is around about 11 miles an hour. So I'll show you what that looks like on here. So there we go, we're getting about nine miles an hour from there. If we just twist it a little bit that way, up the gusts up there again and if we move it that way a lot lower speeds but some good solid gusts of around about 11 miles an hour we're getting from here what we'll do is we'll head out a little bit onto the field onto a little bit more of an exposed area 
and we'll see what it's like up there once we're away from the trees. Okay, we're much more exposed now. So there are still a little bit of trees around us, but if you look at the wind direction, going from that direction, there's not much out there. Wind turbines don't seem to be moving much over that direction, but over there, they're moving quite fast. So I do wonder whether the wind turbines over there are actually stopped because of the wind speeds. But let's have a look what we get in the anemometer then. I'll hold that up. Okay, so that we're not gusting at the moment, that's about 15 miles an hour. And there are some gusts coming in now. But that's about 14, 15 miles an hour. So let me show you on that one. About 10 miles an hour there. Wind's died down a little bit, but you can see how that's going round. Um, I'll hold it up a little bit higher. I'm sure the height arm up is not going to make that much difference. No, the wind's died down a fair bit now. So we're going down to about eight miles an hour based on the wind direction. And seven. First field test of this then. It works okay. Hard to tell how accurate it is. Met weather's saying base wind of 21 with gusts up to 30. I'm not getting that on here. It is going to depend on your height, um, cover around you and all those type of things. But it's a good indicator and I can use this to compare to where things are. I've had one problem with it uh, on my second use out of it when we're in the unsheltered bit of the old railway track. Had a bit of trouble getting it on. Um, I had to take the battery cover off, reseat the battery and put it back on. So I'm going to keep an eye on that. If that becomes a problem, I'll get in touch with the seller and the manufacturer and just check what that is. Not sure, the battery strength meter is showing full, so it could just be the seat in the battery. Could be what I need to do is put just a little bit of paper in there just to give it a bit of pressure to keep it on there. But I'll definitely keep an eye on that. Otherwise, pleased with it. There are, there are more expensive ones out there. This one seems to do the job for me and um, gives me at least an indication of it. Oh, so wind is picking up again now. Let's see what we're getting up to. That was 16 there. So we gusted it to about 16 miles an hour. Going, and that's 20 now. Yeah, we get some good gusts on there now. Going 18, 20 mile an hour gusts. I can tell you, I would want to fly the uh, Air 2 in this. I can definitely tell. Um, it'd struggle. I think it would um, stay level, but there's always a worry, especially as you go higher, uh, that you're going to lose uh, the control of the drone and it's not going to be able to return from home. That's the end of this then. Thank you very much. Um, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you on my next one.